right, Chipper, how many times do you do an interview and people ask you, are you sure this is it? Are you sure this is the last hurrah? Uh, pretty much every town, a couple times uh, each day, you know, but it's, uh, my mind's made up and uh, the body's, uh, the mind is willing, but the body is not able uh, any longer, at least on a daily basis. And that's uh, part of the reason why I'm riding off into the sunset. What has been the reaction for you every in every city where you make your final appearance? Oh, it's been uh, it's been overwhelming to be honest with you. It's been uh, a lot of fun to uh, go into these parks for the last time. Looking forward to to my last trip to San Diego. I've always loved coming here. It's uh, 70 and sunny every day. It's a you know perfect way to play the game of baseball and. Um, I've always enjoyed my time here in San Diego. Okay, since we're on the San Diego topic, Ben, is there is there a single moment that stands out to you, good or bad? I think, uh, not necessarily good from my standpoint. Uh, I can remember playing over at Qualcomm hmm. in the uh, uh, LCS in 1998 and playing in front of my biggest crowd. I think there were 80,000 people there, and listening to Trevor Hoffman come out to Hell's Bells. That was. That was spine tingling. Just, I had goosebumps, and you know, it wasn't wasn't to benefit me. It was uh, it was certainly a bad thing whenever Trevor came into the game against us. And of course, that was the year that then they go on to the World Series. So that that was the moment. Who was your who was your least favorite Padre pitcher to to, to face then? Um, probably uh, Kevin Brown. I think Kevin was probably one of my nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> my, this, is, this, is, this is my whole career. I mean, he was, uh, you know, a lot of elbows and kneecaps and straight filth coming out of his right arm. So he was, uh, he was a guy who always gave me problems. I certainly never, uh, never looked forward to facing him. What are you gonna miss most about the game, or do you not really know that yet? Um, I'll miss uh, the camaraderie with the guys in the clubhouse. Uh, my, my favorite time of the day is from about 6:15 to 7:05, just when we're all at our lockers, kind of kind of shooting a breeze with each other and becoming closer as teammates. I'll miss the 30 seconds when we run out onto the field for the first time, especially at home, and everybody standing up and welcome, welcoming us to the to the ball field. There are going to be a lot of things. I'm sure uh, a lot more things will, will become apparent once I'm, I'm done with it. You have you have accomplished so much record wise. And I remember I think you were here in San Diego when you when you passed your hero Mickey Mantle for what is it what most was it was most cr by a switch hitter. Which of your accomplish accomplishments to date stands out the most to you? Which means uh, most? Well, I mean one stands out today because he's here. He came up and said hello to me, Dave Winfield. I just passed him in career homers. I think uh, uh, last week when uh, when San Diego was was at our place, uh, uh, he wanted to come up and congratulate me. Obviously you. When you played as long as I have, and, and you've you've hit some home runs, you're, you're starting to pass some pretty some pretty fair company. And, and Dave Winfield was certainly a guy that I looked up to when I was coming up. As you leave the game right now, who are some of the bright young stars that you see as part of the next generation? And uh, well, the the, the 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 Braves are in good hands uh, once I shove off. Uh, guys like uh, obviously Brian McCann being the staple behind the plate is is uh, you know probably gonna take over t you know team leadership but you got young guys like Jason Hayward and and Freddie Freeman and young pitchers like Chris Medlin and Mike Miner that are going to uh, ensure that the the torch continues to be passed. Are we ever going to see you in college football game day like we did a couple years ago? I don't know if they asked me. I certainly enjoyed it. You know, my time doing that. It's awfully fun. I'm a huge football fan, both co collegiately and professionally, and um, really into Southeastern Conference football. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it. Uh, I'd like to do some TV, I think. It, it, that might be the, the buffer in between um, playing and coaching for me is a little bit of TV. So we'll have to wait and see. What took you so long to discover Twitter? <laughs> you are great. I need like an interpreter. Being being married and, uh, you know, an old fogey, a father of four, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, took care of that, but uh, I'm going through my second divorce right now, so I've, I've gotten a chance to experience what, you know, Twitter's all about, and I think I've been on for, you know, a little over a month now, and got 120,000 followers. It's, it's really taken off, taken on a life of its own. You need, you need to go ahead and, and promote your handle right now. <laughs> real, <laughs> real CJ10, real CJ10. That's, uh, that's where you can find me and talk to me on Twitter. Chipper, we're going to miss you, but we're going to be watching you on TV and whatever else is next in your career. So thank you so much for everything. It's my pleasure. Thanks.